What's good y'all? Welcome to the Artist Plays. Today we are doing a Game Speak episode where we talk about games that we probably will never ever finish. So what I want to talk about today is there's a game that I came across while I was on Twitter. I didn't hear much about it uh, beforehand. It was literally just me kind of randomly scrolling and I came across it and I, it was a great find. It was a game that apparently takes a lot of inspiration from there. So I'm gonna hop over to the Twitter page for the game and we're gonna kind of take a look at it together. I haven't really looked at it much. Like I said, I came across, I briefly uh, saw clips of it, but I didn't actually uh, watch the video. And so the name of the game is called I Code. I'm, I'm assuming that that's how you pronounce it. They could be trying to pronounce it a little bit different. I did look into the developer a little bit before I made this video and the developer is one person one person and you're gonna understand in a second why that's unbelievable because the work that i'm looking at is just quite frankly uh too good to be true but i hope that it is true i code is the name of the game at least that's how we're gonna pronounce it and as it's described here on the twitter page is an action rpg with life sim elements sold developed by ace 191115 all right and now that name is actually quite important because I think it shows up inside the, the game itself. Let's scroll down and first watch the video, right? So this is the trailer right here. I actually want to watch it in YouTube. So, okay, before that play, stop, 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 Seven days ago, you were born into a world that appears irrevocably fragmented and doomed to repeat itself in an endless cycle of death. Mm. Yet, they said they the D word. There we go. There we go. Right here. Fate. The number. I had saw it on a picture a on the um, I think the Twitter page. Just be aware. Okay, stop right there. So far, what we're seeing right now is that it's very story driven. I like the voice over. I, I it's a single person developing this. I'm sure that they're uh tasking people with the voice acting. I'm um, looking at this scene right here. What I'm seeing is I'm seeing, in my opinion, a uh, Nair vibes, but more so Drakengard vibes. That's how I pronounce it. I don't know, is it Drakengard? Ew. Yes. Drakengard, for those who don't know, is a series of games. It's three games that was pre... Pre-seed? Is that the word? They come before the Nair game. So Nair Automata, Automata, is the most probably the most popular game inside the series right now and that's what everybody kind of knows of the series but it actually started with Drakengard and Drakengard there's a character or the characters tend to look like this I think I'm talking about Drakengard 3 the girl on the left mostly looks like a character from Drakengard the girl on the right actually looks like a character from Nier so there's a, a character the main character that you play as is a Nier reincarnation which is a mobile gacha game so I only played it once. I actually played it on the channel for those who haven't seen it. And I think that I made a pretty dope video of it, but uh, you can watch it and let me know. I'll post a link down inside of the description. But you see the girl right here inside the center. She reminds me of this chick over on the right. I don't know why. Maybe I'm tripping. Maybe I'm looking into it too much. Uh, that's the first thing that I got from it. Let's watch the video. They say that those who sign the contract are doomed. Oh, 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 oh. Sign the contract. That also, the the idea of signing contract. Anyways, we're not gonna dive inside that, but that also reminded me of something inside Dragon Guard from the story that I know. But what really, really reminds me of Dragon Guard is this girl right here. You see the flower inside her eye, and that ain't straight out of Dragon Guard Three. By the way, I have never played Dragon Guard before because I I just didn't really know of it back then. Right here, this is the main character that you play as in Dragon Guard Three. And she has a flower in her eye, so clearly this is uh, gravely inspired by that. And I like it. I'm, I'm all for it, but I actually want to see how far the inspiration goes. Looking at this, I just kind of wish that we had a Dragon Guard 3 remake. Maybe, maybe, maybe that might be inside of works. We'll find out maybe chased soon. Chased by a puppet, or also chased by misfortune. Mm. Bars. Okay, now we're seeing the gameplay. That was Tokyo. That was uh, Shibuya, I believe. Okay. I like what I see. Okay. Okay. Wait, 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 wait. Go back a second. This right here, this is showing you how grand, I guess, the set pieces can be inside the game. 
this is probably going to lead into a fight because the next scene showed you flying around and presumably uh, in battle. I don't understand how this developer is making this. This is outstanding, but this right here also just shows great, I don't know, execution. Yes. This looks beautiful. This looks amazing. What One thing that I did notice though is the camera angles, not in this scene in particular, it's clearly showing what's up. Uh, this looks this looks fine. It looks kind of more from the top down, but I was seeing in some other areas that it seemed kind of low. But no, I think that it's actually pretty fine. And the reason why I was pointing that out was because another game that's similar to Nair that's kind of in the news right now is Stellar Blade, right? Of course, everybody knows Stellar Blade. I'm not gonna speak on it too much because there's a lot of information about it already out there, and I have not played a demo because I don't own a PS5 yet. But Stellar Blade, I've noticed through the clips that the camera angle is always very like kind of like low and it just looks really good whoa whoa hey yo okay 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 we saw a lot we saw a lot we saw a, a lot of different environments including this one this looks like it's kind of like a dream like environment i don't know it reminds me of assassin's creed when you were like practicing how to fight we're seeing a lot of movement a lot of movement i mean the fighting looks fast paced it looks smooth it looks oh wow this is a pretty dope place too it looks energetic we saw some parkour as well over here when she was swinging on the that the stoplight and then she uh used the hook the grappling hook to swing over this looks like it'll be a lot of fun to traverse the cities i'm, I'm really curious how open world these environments are because we're seeing a lot of environments and i don't know i'm a little bit um curious about like one developer developing all of this like the scope blah 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 okay vehicles as well whoa okay we're gonna stop it again it so one of the things that we're seeing and again this is in development and this one person let me just reiterate that is that in these uh, grand environments, we're seeing some population. I think we saw some over here inside the city. We got some people over here inside the distance. We got vehicles, which I like. Again, this looks super real. I feel like I've been in this location before in Japan. I live in Japan, by the way, for those who don't know. I, I, I know this area, um, but we're also noticing it does not that much population, right? But that's fine. Um, but with all these environments, right? It's like, how how alive are these cities going to be? How grand is it going to be? I'm noticing that it does look like we are caged in. If you take a look around, this is kind of inside some walled off vicinity. It's giving me uh, Attack on Titan vibes. So maybe it's not too massive and maybe there's just a lot of diversity within this small area, which I like. I don't like things that are just open world and big just for the sake of it. But how is the population going to be? How well is the game going to run if it's solo developed? How well is it going to be optimized? Those are things that we have to consider. Even underwater, that's crazy. Look at how futuristic these cities are. This is insane. Wishlist on Steam. So I guess we can already wishlist it. So maybe it'll come out um, early access and then we can uh, start playing it sooner ra rather than later. So it'll be like in a in development stage. Actually, let's go back to Matt Chief. Why is it posted through this account? This account has absolutely nothing to do with the game in particular. So I guess they don't have an official account yet. The developer is active on Twitter. Um, so I would say give the developer and the game a follow, support if you are interested in this type of content. Uh, pay attention so that you can stay up to date and know when things like this is going up. Oh wait, go back to that. Let me break your head. How is I code pronounced? Oh, we, we, y'all can't even see it. <laughs> so let me break your head. How is I code pronounced? I code, kind of similar to how you pronounce the name Ico. Oh, that's the answer. I thought it was about to be, I, I thought it was about to be like a trivia. So we now know how it's pronounced, which is what I assumed I code and then the meanings. I code with the D E S small. Wordplay with Ico, name of the protagonist. Okay, so now we have a name of the protagonist, Ico. I code, literally AI code or coded by an AI, okay? Ico de. In Japanese, Ico de. Uh, Ico de can mean with love, meaning I code was made as a love letter 
to other games, particularly Nier. I don't really hear people say I could it. I've never really heard people say it. That's an interesting thing to find out. I code. The pronunciation can also sound like I code, meaning the game was coded by me, one person, so developed. That is, clap it up. Wow, that's absolutely fantastic. I wish I could do something like that. I code. The title can also sound like this, code of the eye. Another fun fact, secret about the logo. There is some text below the logo, as you already know, but there are four words bigger than the others. When you combine those four words, you get other sentence. Similar memories define history. Finally, the number 19111545 translates to I code using the alphabet. Wow. What you see, you're like, oh wow, like it's such a simple concept, but I never would have thought of that. This developer is so fun. This developer is very, very uh, interesting. More interesting stuff about this number. One, if you add one plus nine plus one plus one plus one plus five plus four plus five, you get 27. This number is important, but there is more. Two plus seven plus uh, is nine. In math, any number multiplied by nine will always result in a number whose digits add up to nine. This is a reference to multiple I codes in the game. Wow. Number nine usually represents the end of a cycle. In this case, the end of the cycle of death. It means completion, but not a final ending. The game starts the month of number nine, September. Uh, also in Japanese, they say each name of the month uh, with the number. So nine is Q in Japanese and the September is Kugatsu. So it's like ninth month. A cat has nine lives. Cats. Another interesting fact about this number is that 19 plus 11 plus 15 equals 45. In the last section of the game, GK Hospital has 45 collectibles. Wow. You just spilling the beans, huh? You already saw one tape on YouTube. Recorded recorded the day 1911 of 2007. 2007, here you can see the number 27 again. Not a coincidence. Are there more secrets? Of course. Okay, I like it. I like it. This is what I like. In ICO, nothing is random. Everything has been pre-planned to an extent you can't even imagine. Wow, how is this one person? This is unbelievable. I almost want to cry because I feel like I haven't done anything in my life. That was fantastic. And again, even this, this gives me extreme Nair vibes because Nair has the numbers inside of it all the time and I never know what they mean and I still don't know what they mean. And I don't think the developer ever talked about it. This developer is actually talking about it, which is dope, but Wow, I mean, this, the creativity is on display, full display here. I don't want to keep you guys for too much longer, so I'm going to more or less end the video here. Uh, let's just take a look at the developer Ace. Uh, it says located in Spain, so I'm assuming that she's Spanish. There's an official website. Let's take a look at that. Oh, wow. It's all in Japanese. Don't know if she's actually translating this or not. Maybe she's uh, hiring someone to do it, but regardless i mean i'm definitely going to i'm gonna wish list this on steam now that i know it's there i'm going to buy it when it drops please 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 uh take a look at this game take a look at the website we have way more explanations going on here uh let me change this to english for y'all because i'm reading this thing y'all have no idea what's going on but we have a lot more information let's let's take a brief look the world of somnium this world is the dream of the rotting corpse of a child who is still alive an opaque and closed box a macabre metaphor where the last breath of a cat is called poison whoa gosh we might have to do another video about this y'all and just really just pick it apart because this might be my new favorite game. Synthetica, Sector F, Sector N. This this image right here looks absolutely stunning. Shibuya, Seiryu Kaijike Hospital. Hmm, okay. Sai is mine. I'm sorry that I'm going through this and not really reading it uh, or picking it apart because I just feel like if this video is too long, nobody's gonna really stick around and watch it. So this is just my initial kind of uh, reaction. Sacred Ruins. This reminds me of like the copied city inside Nair. Looks beautiful. Schrodinger Town. If y'all know anything about Schrodinger's cat, it's about the idea of something being both alive and dead at the same time and you can't know until you observe it and until you observe it, all possibilities are in existence. And I think that that uh, goes back to what the developer was talking about the cat and um, the dying child who's the rotting child who's also not dead. So there's a bit of um, Schrodinger's philosophy in here. Again, this website has 
a lot of information. So this is not just a game that's going to disappear. I don't believe. I believe that this game is going to definitely be released at some point because there's just a lot of work going into this game. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight characters. Did I miscount that? I think that because she kept talking about the number nine. And it actually has a lot of information about each character and this is all translated into multiple languages. Okay, SNS, let's give it a shout out. This is the wishlist page. Oh, she also has an Instagram and a YouTube. So there is an official YouTube. So why was I watching the video clip on a different channel? So are there more videos? Oh, there are more videos. Well, we can watch more content. When was this uploaded? Four days ago. Okay, 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 okay. This developer is active. This developer is active. This game development is active, guys. Please check it out, iCode. Link will be down inside the description. Also, links to this uh, developer's Twitter and uh, the game Twitter as well will also be down inside the description. Of course, the official site and the Steam page. For those who are new to my channel, this is the artist plays. I do let's plays me and my co-host Chibi Sato is a, a VTuber. Um, she's not here with me today. Um, but if you guys like watching Japanese horror games, mainly we play Japanese horror games, but we also play a lot of different games such as ready or not just a lot of games. Quite frankly, it's, it, it, it's a random bunch, but we do English and Japanese commentary. It's a good time. I also do live streams at times when I can. So make sure that you subscribe if you are new. And also, if you guys are interested, I'm thinking of doing more podcasting kind of uh, elements over on my podcast channel. The Struggles Podcast, I haven't updated in a while. Chibi Sato also joined me uh, for one of these episodes. So again, if you guys want to hear about Japan, if you guys want to hear me speak le Japanese, if you guys want to hear me, see me hang out with Chibi Sato, my VTuber co-host, make sure that you uh, join us on YouTube, follow us on all our socials, you see it down inside the description. And also, if you subscribe, hit that bell icon to stay up to date, okay? That was Game Speak. I I'm not even sure what episode it is, but I enjoy doing these. I should probably do these more often, quite frankly, because uh, Let's Plays do take a lot of times. These are usually a little bit quicker. I can get more content out. But as usual, thanks for watching, thanks for listening. Like, share, subscribe. Let's go down the back. Catch you next one. Peace.